<laughs> so our first guest today, actually, it was I, I think I can speak for you, Bill, that when we saw the motorcade and the official Berkeley County coach yeah. pull up out front escorting um, Clint, uh, excuse me, Gary Wine for his first interview, I presume, here yeah. since he has become county administrator, it's really, it's something. I did not realize we had that number of police officers in the, not only in the county, but in the state. It was a, a phenomenal. It number. was, it was, and I hope that the circling helicopters don't yeah. ruin the audio here. So. You know, you're both really funny. You, you talk about pushing buttons, and I was going to say <laughs> Rob usually pushes lots of buttons, not on the radio, but <laughs> great job. Thanks for inviting me. Nice to have you here. And, can, and there was That's no motorcade. It's just me. No, there wasn't. SUV. There wasn't. He took the crown off before yeah. he put the headphones on. But you know, it's. But so. in, but in all in all seriousness, if any, we said of the crown, I cannot think of anyone that would be less tended tendency to having a crown than Gary Wine. I so. would agree. Yeah. I'd agree. Yeah, thanks. So me. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. What's it like? What, you're two weeks into the new job almost? Well, I took the first three days off. You know, the, we had West Virginia Day off, and the governor gave Juneteenth off, and I took Wednesday as a holiday, vacation day. So I really only worked two days in my first week. It was great. It was great. <laughs> and if I could just keep up the two-day work week thing, we'll be in great shape. Uh, I was going to say, is that going to be the standard uh, uh, practice now? No, sir. <laughs> it is not. That's the rumor we're not going to start. <laughs> That's right. And if anybody works hard, it's Gary Wine. So, yeah. Gary, what, what, uh, you took over from Alan Davis, who had a very successful, a very, uh, a very impressive career. And, uh, and I know you were his deputy for, what two years one or two years almost five almost five years I didn't remember. and prior to that you had been the IT so you've had a lot of familiarity with the county you know what's working well and I think uh, as uh, Alan and everybody would say there are also always things that need that can use some improvement what are some of those things that that you had build upon Alan's successes my goodness um, you know to, to step into a position that was left in such great order that, that I've had opportunities to do, uh, to kind of sit back and m make a, a decision or kind of help the direction, first and foremost, keep it on the path that it's on, right? Um, I think there's some opportunities for us to develop some local relationships, maybe that have uh, not been fostered as good as they could have been over the years. And that's local, you're talking about with the city? I think that's one. Okay. Uh, I think the county and city has a great opportunity. You know, we, we both serve uh, the taxpayers of the county, and I think there's some opportunity there for us to do some things. Um, you know that we're involved in a potential museum at uh, one 10 West King Street, uh, the old historic courthouse at 100 West King Street um, will be empty in within the next 8 to 10 months. Um, so there's some great opportunity on the corner of downtown to all kinds of things that we might be able to get into. But um, we work hard, you know, and try and make things happen. And I think fostering that and bringing that ahead might be a, a good opportunity. Now, the 100 e, uh, West King Street, uh, the county clerk, uh, Tony Petrucci, is the only occupant in that building right now. Is that correct? That is correct. And the, the $10 million renovation that is currently underway at the Dunn Building at 400 West Stephen Street, um, the, the clerk, Mr. Petrucci, his staff, along with his existing finance and voters registration. So all of the county clerk's efforts will be at 400 West Stephen Street, leaving 100 West King vacant. Yeah, so this uh, has been a long dream of the county commissioners, even going back to the time I was there, Correct. to having a one-stop one -stop shopping for everybody in the county. So you not have to go from building to building and go to one building and get everything done. That's correct. So the, the campus that begins at 400 West Stephen, and extent, which is, I don't know what block that is of Raleigh, but as you go down Raleigh and head down, clear down to 510 where the day report center is, you encompass... All of the county services from tax, assessor, ambulance planning, all of that stuff. Uh, then you move over to the judicial center where the magistrate, circuit county, uh, circuit clerk, probation, uh, prosecutor. You go next step to the sheriff's department and then lastly to the day report center. So it's all encompassed on that two-block campus. Yeah. You hinted a second ago about the use of the, the old courthouse. What, was, what are the intents and how will it be utilized? Well, I think that's just it. And the opportunities are endless. So uh, I think the vision of the county commission now, I almost said council, uh, is to 
talk to the folks, particularly the city, whom are downtown, uh, and see if there's anything we could do for them, do together, um, kind of stepping out here. They really, this is news to them too, I'm sure, but I think we're going to have some space uh, that we can potentially do really good things on the corner. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of possibilities. There's been some talk over the years of having a, a mecca, if you will, for, for several nonprofits, Chamber of Commerce right. and, and the like, but but also the museum. The, the These buildings are both a blessing and a curse. <laughs> there are marvelous, marvelous buildings. Uh, un, I start to say unfortunate. It's actually fortunately that so many of the communities in West Virginia have these buildings. You can't afford to really get rid of them. They're, they're too much part of in green of history, but they're such a huge maintenance problem. There. And they uh, and not not many of them have been maintained as well as they should have been over the years. Was it Governor Tomlin that did a big push a few years ago of trying to renovate these old, old buildings? They, they, he was one of the governors. Yeah, the, the courthouse improvement fund that was established that gives you some opportunity to reach in and grab grants for those efforts. Yeah. So... Um, our building has a new roof, so it's dry inside. One of the things we struggle with, our HVAC, uh, it's got a 50, 55-year-old boiler uh, and some window shakers, if you will, to help keep yeah. them cool. So that's probably address number one, but we'd have to identify a use case, right? See what it looks like. As you said, imagine, if you will, you know, everybody from the CBB to Chamber of Commerce in one place. That's just an idea. Uh, there was also discussions of maybe like a small business incubator where people could rent space in it and use it. It's endless. It really is. Hey, Gary, is your office involved at all in the distribution of the opioid settlement, Berkeley County share of the opioid settlement? The, the, the county commission, uh, matter of fact, today at, I believe, at 1 o'clock, the, the, the convening of the West Virginia First or whatever it is, they, they, they work today and start to appoint those members that will be involved in that. But our office directly will just have a one member. But, yeah, it's starting today. And what is the magnitude of that number? Do we know? That I believe, uh, I believe the magnitude to Berkeley County, if I understood it correctly, is somewhere around seven million. I believe that's the number. And that money can be spent. It, it's kind of an odd phrasing, and I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. But anything related to the opi opioid crisis, which is, you know, depending on how you how you twist that definition, it can be pretty much anything. Right. As we understand it, and again, I'm, I'm no expert, but will be as it moves forward, uh, clear down to debt service on buildings, to programs, I mean, anything tied to those efforts. So this commission that's meeting today, are they the ones that determine where, they where, the, where the money goes? Yeah, the formation of this, they will be voting members on that, and that's how it'll happen, yeah. And you will not be a part of it? I will not. Um, the not initially on shouldn't how it you comes be down. pardon well, me shouldn't you be no we, the the county commission will have a, a local appointee to it uh, there's some nominations all of that transpires today I think it's one o'clock is when that commission starts is this a public hearing it is it is it'll be streamed on our website um, and it's open it's at Foreigner West Stevens so it's an open meeting. Yeah, Gary. Going back to something, I, I look at the chats and the uh, our we have a very active chat community, <laughs> and they they make a lot of contributions. Do every meeting, uh, every time we are on there, a good comments are made. One of the comments is made about we're, we're kind of just in front about you taking some time off, who, which raises the question. Who establishes vacation days? That's not done locally. That's done by the governor, is it not? No, sir. That's done by the organization. When you say vacation by days. Vacation day. Uh, yeah, if, we, if the county ta is, is closed for the day, mm -hmm. the county commission, uh, isn't that generally taking taken the lead well, of the governor? Talking about closing the buildings. Yeah. So, yeah, buildings, it's yeah. done by declaration of the governor. Yeah. So the governor declares the holidays of the state, if you will, yeah. typically followed suit by federal and so on and so yeah. forth. Uh, so when the governor, in particular, let's talk about the Juneteenth most recent, yeah. um, that's a declaration by the governor. So when the governor declares it, obviously following suit quickly are all the courts. So we run, we maintain and support the judicial system. So instantly the courts shut the judicial center down and then it follows suit. Then the counties and the municipalities typically follow suit yeah. with what the governor does. Yeah. Yeah. 
We can't close it without direction from the governor. We can't just arbitrarily say, okay, we're shutting the building down today. And where is the... Uh, I may be getting too much in the weeds. Uh, the judicial side, the courthouse, that's all done, uh, dictated or controlled by the Supreme Court. Is it right? is that yeah. follows what the governor yeah. does. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so we established at the beginning that um, you inherited a very nice spot. I did. Think things were running along well. However, what are the goals moving forward? What, like three years from now, what <laughs> would you like to see? Well, let's remember the the position that I have is I'm an administrative officer, really. So I follow the goals and objectives of what the county commission wishes to have. So I'm not a policy setter, right? I'm a, I'm an implementer for what the the vision of the elected county commission asks. So for me, I can tell you, and and Bill knows me well, John. Uh, I'm a service person, so you give me something and say this is how it's to be done, I'm the guy that makes sure it's done and serviced well. Um, I, I will have some opportunity to influence decisions, but I'm not a decision maker, really. Um, you know, county administrator, chief administrative officer, there's no executive level to me at all. So unlike city managers and stuff where they, they make those big turns and tide and stuff like that. I, I really don't have that authority or really role in the organization. Um, the, the board of five or board of five county commissioners, um, uh, from budget to policies for personnel and things like that, they kind of set the tone and then look to the administrator and say, okay, this is what we want to make it happen. So, uh, there's not been enough time in the chair where I'm at now to say, Hey, we're going to do this or that. I can tell you, if anything, um, bringing everybody together and understanding that all of the constitutional officers under the umbrella of the county, as well as the municipality or whatever it may be, I really would like to see us all work together for the greater good because it really applies. What What is the scope of your job? Who all reports to you? So all of the county commission department heads from engineering, planning, IT, um, court security, uh, day report center, uh, as it's rolled up, honestly, probably around 250 people. Uh, and then I play a role to the constitutional officers for administrative support there too. So the county's probably just over 500 employees, the constitutional officers have theirs and they report directly to them. I don't have any say, but we try and help as best we can to lend that administrative effort because not every constitutional officer has administrative people. You know, the sheriff, per, sheriff is one, you know, he has, you know, uh, an admin, if you will, but he doesn't have administrative staff. He doesn't have people that do what we do. So we help everywhere. Data management, which is one of the more important uh, things, the record keeping life. Now you, you, have the responsibility for the bulk of the data management. One hundred percent of yeah. all of it. Yeah, that was a matter of fact, Mr. Stubblefield, you were on the commission when we made that change. Uh, data management, technical management prior to 2007 was done in silos across all the constitutional offices. Mr. Stubblefield's vision, the, the county commission's vision, then I again, as a service person, took what they said, here's what we want you to do. And today in 2023, 100% of all data, excluding the court's data, uh, is managed locked through the county commission's IT department. So great responsibility. That's deeds, uh, finances, engineering plats, plans, anything you have, we're responsible for it. And Gary, picking up on that, we all think of these horror, are reminded of these horror shows, most recently Morgan County about 10 or 12 years or so ago, when the courthouse burned and many of the records went along with it. Discuss the backup plans that you have for the data. So the, the, it's multi-level, uh, so obviously we we recover and back up, or back up nightly, and it goes off premise. It goes to different locations. It has different retention policies. Um, people really don't understand the cost of just protecting this digital stuff. It's it's a it's a big piece of the pie to just one keep it safe uh, or get it backed up, and two keep that backup safe. The bad guys are now in the business of messing up your backup. It's crazy. Now, uh, the county made a major push a few years or so ago under your guidance and direction to digitize all of these old records. Mm -hmm. Where are we now in that process? 
Um, since 1998, all of the county clerk's records have and are been digital. Then we went backwards and digitized um, kind of a window back to where the, the title searches were necessary uh, so that a lawyer could sit at a computer and do a title search and not have to go flip pages. So I think most current title searches are covered digitally. Uh, and those, we even offer remote service for the legal community to get to the records so they don't need to come into the court. There were days back in 2005 and six where you couldn't get in a record room because it was so busy. In today's world, even property moves just as fast. A lot of it's done remotely. Uh, the circuit clerk on their side, all of their records are digitized. Uh, decades of information for the sheriff's department, all of planning and engineering, all the plats, that's all digitized. So it's it was a concerted effort in it's moving faster than it ever has. We create more stuff um, at the paper level than we ever have. It's crazy. Statewide, uh, how how's what has been the success level for the other counties? I think that I would like to give you credit. I am giving you credit for taking the lead, and Berkeley County has been, I think, in the van for getting the digitized digitization done. What about the other counties? I mean, obviously, there are other counties that have pushed forward. Uh, I don't know of anyone that's quite as advanced and to the point where we are, only because th back then the county commission identified that it it made sense and too committed to funding, and that's really what it boils down to, right? What what level of funding can be applied to that piece in the priorities of it <clears throat> and it's it's worked really well how how long have you been with the county so i started full-time employment as an employee in 2007 um and i worked contractually since uh september of 98. so is it historically and i'm looking at bill here too is is it it seems like this is almost a, a career advancement for you whereas historically where i come from the the search for this position typically looks outside of of the county is it unique that this that you've kind of earned your way in into this position before I, you answer can i build up on that yeah uh, the <clears throat> county did do a outside the box search they did a station uh, an, uh a regional perhaps even a nationwide search uh it was a uh, gary is truly a unique individual from two reasons he brings a, a technical skills to the table which we've alluded to he brings something that's equally or even more important he works well with people works very well with people and not just the county but all the other groups as well so as they were doing the search it was they they went through it but but it was to no one's surprise that they tapped Gary on the shoulder yeah I think that that speaks volumes doesn't yeah, it? it does when, it when does, you look yeah. and you look and you look and you find out yeah. the, the guys next door you know the, the yeah. best one right. yeah. so you know obviously I have 30 years of technical experience and have been involved in West Virginia county government for all of that time um, when it was up to about 2018 that I'd worn solely the, the technology hat. <clears throat> and um, Alan, I was at a, a conference in Southern California. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And he sent me an email with a job description attached. He said, what do you think of this? And I thought, that's all the stuff I do, but it's not my title. My Somebody coming on board and kind of getting between he and I. And he said, no, dummy, it's singing about changing that title to you that evolved to deputy county administrator uh and gave me five years <clears throat> of opportunity to kind of work with him um the county commission did as bill said advertised published nationally uh they had lots of applicants and when it came time and made the decision after the interview process um i was lucky enough to be selected um for me the migration under the hood of West Virginia County government. Uh, I have so much tenure in there that it was an easy switch from me. I haven't let go of the technical stuff, but it's inevitable uh, coming sooner than later. I'll have to let go and really not play, wear the technical hat. I just think having all the institutional memory yeah. to bring into the job would, would be so important. Memory's dangerous. I have some institutional knowledge, but I can't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, Gary's allergies is obviously kicking in. He's right. not that emotional as no. he sounds. He sounds like he's emotional, <laughs> but it's just allergies. So yeah, yeah. That or the yeah. bug that flew yeah. around here yeah. and I swallowed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. 
Gary, uh, the budget's coming around. Uh, in fact, you've already approved the budget, but it started implementing a couple of so weeks ago. Give us a very, very quick breakdown on how much go, uh, what is the size of the budget, what goes in the major, uh, major pockets. Yeah, so my tenure... Uh, starting back in the the early 2000s, uh, they were just around 19 million dollars. They crossed. We crossed 50 million this year. Uh, the majority of that is public safety uh, between law enforcement, prosecuting attorney, everything tied to public safety. And then you know the day report center is a big chunk of that. But that's all grant money. We may spend it, but it comes back. So the majority is public safety. Um, the County Commission and its departments, uh, and some of that is debt service on the building, so it seems larger than it is. But if you took the debt service out, the, the ancillary administrative function of the local government is not that large. It's fractional compared to the rest of the monies that are applied. Uh, maybe next time I come give you some cool graphs and kind of show you. Uh, I'm unprepared to talk specifics today, but show, show you how it's laid out and where it goes. We're about to run out of time, but a question that you just uh, <coughs> alluded to that I think we need information for. The, our account is growing, all aspects, but the judicial side's also growing. Huge. We're going to get uh, additional magistrates. We're getting a, we'll be getting uh, new circuit judges uh, in the uh, uh, years and months ahead. We have, the space is critical. Correct. We have this, uh, is it the Crawford, Crawford, Crawford. that uh, is an abandoned, has been abandoned since they had the retail stores in there. That's correct. Beautiful building that needs a lot of work. $20 million worth. $20 million. When will you start renovating that building? So the plans for that are in the Supreme Court's hands now. The county commission uh, has done their designs and work, and um, probably in the next year or two, they'll be under construction. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> Doesn't everybody remember WKRP in Cincinnati? Thank you so much for coming in and joining us today. And um, see you in a little bit. Thanks. Cincinnati.